So let's play mock GM for the New York Mets now. And what would I do right now with the, if, if I were GM of the Mets? And the, the Mets, I mean, obviously are uber talented team, but they've been also decimated by injuries. They have over a dozen guys on the IL right now. And it was good to see Kevin Pillar come back after being drilled in the face and having no surgery. Kudos to him. He's a tough guy, and I know he wants to be there to support his team and support his teammates and be available. So give him a lot of credit for that. I mean, that, that was a serious, serious injury. So well done, and I hope he stays healthy. But that said, the Mets, there are some moves that I think that if I, I would make if I were the Mets. Number one, I would try to acquire Adam uh, Adam Frazier, the utility, super utility guy from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And it would cost you know, a decent amount of prospects, but he's young. Well, he's 29. He's versatile, and he plays multiple positions. Okay, And he's a solid hitter. He's hitting over 300 this year. But it gives the Mets you know, the opportunity for to diversify their lineup. Okay, and with a utility guy, and because he can play so many different positions, infield and outfield, and again, it gives him an opportunity to rest certain guys when you know when the depth behind them might be a little bit suspect. This guy is an immediate upgrade to depth behind them, particularly since he can play on a regular basis. So that alone is an improvement for the Mets. Okay, and he, I think he would be, he's a good, solid veteran, a good team, and I think he'd be a good addition to that team. In, in their quest to you know keep atop the American uh, the National League East, and you know potentially you know go deep in the playoffs because they, they they definitely made some huge expenditures and I know Carlos Carrasco hasn't played yet, and um, Taiwan Walker's had some injuries as well. But when those guys come back, and I know Syndergaard's now shut down unfortunately, so they're having some issues on the pitching front too. So I expect them to, I mean I would expect to be looking for a starting pitcher at some point. Um, keeping an eye out, but this is an, this is kind of is an, uh, a need, in my opinion, that would represent a, a significant upgrade and address needs on a regular basis with a guy that can play several times per week. Secondly, I would go after, I would call the Cubs and say, what do you want for Chris Bryant? It's going to cost a lot, but bringing in that guy, he's got his all-star stroke back, he's made some adjustments to his swing and his mechanics, and he's back to his MVP look himself, and that would be a huge move for the Mets, and they could lock him up long term. And you have, then you'll have him and Lindor, and like that infield would just be ridiculous, ridiculous. So, and again, yes, it would be costly, and it would cost them a long, you know, big long term contract, but you wouldn't have to worry. Plus, he can play left field when he needs, so he can even come over and give P. Alonso a day off at third at first base. He plays first base too, so he also has versatility. If you get a guy like Brian who can play multiple positions and Adam Frazier who can also play multiple positions, that gives the Mets a lot of flexibility, a lot of options, okay, and a lot of breathing room too to rest some of the starters and 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 to you know have a little bit more confidence that the depth is they've significantly upgraded their depth now and brought in another All Star potentially too. And that to me is, is, is a, is, I would hate for him to go, I mean, at the Braves, I think are a key target for him. So I'd, I'd love to take him away from the Braves and the Nationals are a target for him. So I would take him away from the Nationals too. So keeping him away from the National League East teams that compete with them to me is a good idea. Plus it would just make the Mets a heck of a, heck of, you know, of a better team. So, and that's the other thing. So and, and one more move I would make I would bring in a, like a reliever particularly on the left-handed side, um, just to kind of give the bullpen a little bit more depth and protection. A guy you know and and since you know Bryant would cost quite a bit in terms of prospects and salary, so would Frazier, and they're already kind of approaching high level of payroll. Um, you bring I would bring in a guy like Derek Holland from the Detroit Tigers, and he's kind of coming back, but he seems to be a better fit in the rotation. And I think a move back to the National League or to the National League just to give them some depth while they keep developing some young guys or as a bridge to somebody else, just to give the the, the, the bullpen a little bit more, another arm and some protection, um, I think would be a good thing. And again, it's a cost-effective move. They might be able to get somebody else on the lefty side that's more cost-effective. I would go for it. But Derek Collin, I think, could be had for a low cost, and he's a free agent at the end of the year, so... It makes sense, especially if they're gonna if they're gonna try and go for it. If they're gonna make one or two big moves at the deadline, this is a complimentary move that they could make that would again incrementally make the team better. But these three moves right here are, are three moves that I would kind of pursue right now if I were GM of the Mets, and um, you know before the deadline. 
or before up to the deadline, leading up to the deadline. So I like to, I mean, I would be as proactive as possible, just like I was when I played mock GM for the Yankees, because teams are starting to be aggressive. And the last thing you want to do is have the guys that you wanted to bring in playing for another team, especially one in your division, because you didn't act and they did. So that's what I would do. You let me know what you think. I play mock GM for the Mets. You know, I will be doing my MLB uh, trade deadline predictions a week of or a couple days prior. But in the meantime, I'm going to continue doing uh, profiles on certain players and who are appealing trade options before the deadline and the best kind of landing spots or fits for them. So keep an eye out for them. Always look in the description. I put them all down there too. And um, let me know if you enjoy them. Hit the thumbs up as well. So I appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.